It is. We've managed to reposition and we can now see all of them beautifully on top of this mound with the morning light bathing them. They watching well one of the adults is watching the ellies in the distance i can just hear the elephants i can't see them at the moment but they are slowly heading in our direction so i'm sure pandemonium will ensue if those elephants do come this way because they like i said earlier are not very fond of lions although if the lions are clever and they just stay still on top of the mound you might find the ellies will pass without them having to worry about it but isn't this cool look at them all spread out you can see another one of the adult females is here on the bottom right and then I think there's another two on the back side that I can see. So it looks like the whole pride is here. It looks like all five lionesses and six cubs are around. I, I will go around just now just to confirm the number of cubs, but I know six cubs were seen yesterday. So they are doing well. They're doing just fine, and it's so good to see them. It's been a long time since I've had any time with the Inkawunas, and they've grown. These little cubs, like I say, are starting to not look like cubs anymore. They're starting to look like adults. You can see there's one of the cubs there. And faces have gotten a lot more elongated and they're starting to really fill out and look at the size of the paws and the teeth even are getting rather large now too Shamsun, you're asking if the male cub will be starting to show his mohawk mane soon. Um, Shamsun should slowly start to come through. You'll find it a lot more around his cheek area, so just behind the ears and down onto his chest will show a lot quicker than what will show on the top of his head. But generally the mohawk, you start to really see it when they get closer towards two years old. So he's still got a bit of time to go before he gets that big mohawk that develops but he will start to show a thickening of fur around his chest and his ears already and we'll start to notice him quite clearly amongst the cubs in the next few months as that mane starts to develop but for now the mohawk i don't think will be out just yet it normally like i say goes up to about two years before that mohawk is really quite developed but you can see every now and then they're just gl glancing their way up the road I wonder if they'll move before the elephants get close. The other interesting thing is that there's a lot of oxpeckers around us and they're calling constantly and oxpeckers are indicative of animals and certain animals, not elephants, will be around so I don't know if there's impalas or nyala or kudu or something that's also close by because the oxpeckers keep bouncing from this tall tree that the lions are under to the left of us and so I don't know if maybe there's a prey item that also might be moving in this area ultimately oxpeckers also will be on things like buffalo um, and so there could be some sort of animal that might be coming here that they're also interested in I'm pretty sure she's watching the, the elephants at the moment but the oxpeckers is a good sign and I wonder if something did come they look hungry enough that they might partake in a hunt even if it is middle of the morning but look at those eyes is that not beautiful Great work, Senzo. I like that shot. That is very pretty. Yes, you are beautiful. Now, that's the female that seems to be getting that glycoma in her right eye. She's the one that's getting that sort of opaqueness and that different colored eye to the other one. Now, you can see this other female has popped up her head as well. So, she's also watching what's going on. So, she's now become quite alert. And who are you? There we go. So she's just watching, and that's the spotted-nosed female that we've got there. You can see all the little black spots on the, the front, and these are all things that I've learned over the time with the Nkumas, and thanks to a lot of you that let us know how to identify them. Lions are a little harder to identify for me personally than what the leopards are, but it's nice to know that you guys can help us and see what's going on. Oh, they are beautiful, this pride. Like I say, it's always so good to see these guys and to be with them again. It really has been a long time for me. I know a lot of the other guys have been seeing them fairly regularly, but it's been a while since I've had a long period of time with the Nkuma pride. In fact, I actually can't even remember the last time I saw them. I think it was that sighting where they were in the mist. Maybe, maybe I've seen them since then, but... Either that or the zebra kill, that's probably the last time that I saw them, which is at least two months ago. So nice to actually catch up with all of them again. No sign of any males, though. There was no tracks of males in amongst the pride as well. So if anyone was wondering if any of the Birmingham boys are around. Yesterday, I know a Birmingham boy was in Simambili. The rest of them, I'm not quite sure where they've been. I know one was mating at some stage with the breakaway Mangens or the Kumbala pride, I think they're called, down in Malamala. 
So it seems as though one has been busy that side. And then the two that we had on Juma the other day, they both went north into Manuleti. So I think that accounts for all four of them at this stage. But definitely no males with the pride at the moment. It's also interesting that we didn't hear any sounds for these lions during the night. I would have thought we might have heard some vocalizing from them, but they seem to keep quite quiet. White Lady Owen, you want to know if this lioness is going to lose her sight in that right eye. I would imagine she might. If it becomes a proper glycoma and it glazes over completely, then yes, she's probably going to lose her sight. I would imagine her sight is already being affected by it. But that's not to say that she won't be able to survive or it's going to hinder her. Because I've known a number of different individuals with one eye, so leopard, lions, um, and they've all survived just fine. We, Safari is a perfect example of that. Safari, you know, is Karula's mother, and she lived to the ripe old age of 19 and a half. So she was old when she died, and she had one eye for the last six years. And it just shows you that they'll use other senses a lot more. They might not have that depth perception quite right, but they'll use their sense of hearing and smell and their whiskers and the other eye to be able to determine what goes on and still be successful. Also, she is part of a pride, so there's a number of other females that are going to help in the hunting. So she's going to be just fine. But I don't think that that eye, she'll be able to see out of it for the for some time. Well, she definitely is going to stop seeing out of it at some point. You can see, like I said, it's getting milky towards the edges. And it will eventually go all the way across and it will become completely white if it is a glycoma. I've seen it also in the Hilda's Rock female down in the south. She had one eye and she also lived to an old age and managed to raise cubs. And So it's not too much of a hindrance for these cats. They get by even if they do have that disability. It's much like short trunk. They, because wildlife, they don't know any better. They just have this instinct to survive even if they do have some sort of disability you'll find that they will work around it and they'll still find a way to survive and that's what's so amazing about wildlife is just how resilient it is to what's going on around them and to be able to survive in a system like this that is so harsh on them is really quite something Sierra, you're wondering what the cub's mini roars would sound like. I know, I'm also quite intrigued to hear them roar. I would really like to see um, this whole pride roaring. And I, they, funny enough, like I was saying just now, they don't tend to make too much noise. I actually can't remember the last time I heard the Inkuhumas roaring, or I don't think I've ever actually even seen them roaring while they've had the cubs. So I'm sure they do, and I'm sure when we get a male that might be with them and starts to roar, the rest of the pride might carry on roaring too and we'll be able to hear the cubs but i think their roars will start to be quite deep now when they were little cubs i'm sure they just squeaked and seeing a tiny cub roaring is well trying to roar is probably one of the best things in the world but these guys i think will sound a little bit deeper now whether they roar is also a question they might just watch the females and be like what is this i don't really know what they're doing um it would be interesting though hopefully this evening maybe we'll get lucky this evening and they will do it for us it is World Lion Day after all, and we would love to hear their voices on World Lion Day because there is nothing better in this world than a lion's roar at close proximity like this. It is just something that goes straight into you and cuts into the deepest part of your being. So maybe this afternoon we'll get lucky. Here comes one that's emerging. Is that the little male? Looks like it might be him. There's a bit of a thickening of fur on his chest, which is what we were talking about earlier. Maybe not. Difficult to say, though. <laughs> They've obviously had a fairly long night because everybody looks very lethargic and very tired at this stage. Heads are all down, and they seem to have walked quite far because, as I was saying, they were left going east yesterday, which means they were heading towards the Kruger, and then they turned and came back towards this area. So they obviously moved a lot, and I see one is having a grassy breakfast this morning. Crazy Critter, you're wondering if lions have ever used a termite mound as a den? Yes, most certainly. 
They sometimes will use termite mounds as dens, same as leopards. But generally, they like to use more thicker, denser areas. Things about termite mounds is they're often quite exposed, and that means that birds of prey and snakes and varying other predators can find the cubs. But it has happened. I've seen it personally that they use it every now and then, particularly if it's a uh, termite mound on the edge of a drainage line. Then you'll find where it's dense and thick, then the cubs can go in there and into any root structures around there. So that they do, do use them from time to time, definitely. This situation that they're doing now is more just a point of vantage. They can sit up there, they can see what's going on around them. They're also getting a nice little bit of sun, so it's a perfect place to rest. As the sun gets up and it starts to get a little bit hotter, you'll find they're going to come down from that mound and find some shade somewhere. But it's very common to find leopard and lion on top of mounds in the early morning and late afternoon as they scan their environment and check what's going around. And they're able to then also sun themselves a little bit, particularly on cold mornings like we had this morning. It is a very common place thing to look for them. And that's why if you're ever out on safari, it's important that you pay attention to all of the termite mounds because it's great place to spot the cats they often are on termite mounds like i say particularly in the early morning and late afternoon where they can get vantage points or at least get some sun to warm up in the morning time now the reason why that lion is eating the grass it is a common thing for lions to eat grass it's not uncommon at all it just helps with the cleaning out of their digestive system so they often do eat grass cats um, do it dogs do it and it's just a way of getting the digestive system in better shape and so it's not anything to worry about he's not turned vegetarian this lion he is still very much a meat eater or she should i say i don't know which one it is but it is just practice that they do every now and then it also looks as though it's just a playful bit of sort of chewing at this stage there's not actually breaking any of that grass off it's more just licking and biting at the grass itself but its sibling is completely out for the count she is having a massive thursday morning nap as is the rest of the pride and it seems as though only one of them is awake and now i don't know where our ellies have gone i can't hear them anymore it seems as though they may have turned off a little bit and are no longer heading towards where we are and that's maybe why everybody's gone back to sleep again and is not too concerned about what's going on around them John, are you asking if the adult elephants, so those big females in there, would charge a pride of lions like this to protect the young ones? Most certainly. Elephants do not like lions at all. And if those elephants that we just saw came along now, they would most certainly chase these lions off this mound just to prove a point and to dominate them. This whole thing and notion of lions being king of the jungle and dominating all other species out here is actually a bit of a fallacy. The elephants are the most dominant of all the animals out here, and they will most certainly chase away any lions if they see them close to their their herd because they know lions can be a threat to their young ones and they're not going to take that risk and they're going to prove to the lions that we are bigger and stronger and therefore we're going to push you away there we go there's one of the other adult females has also just popped her head up now so that's three adults that we can see there you go she's just having a bit of a grooming session there now i don't know which one that is i wonder if amber eyes is not lurking somewhere on the other side of the mound here She's such a special character as well. It sounds like the Ellies are still in a similar place. I've just heard somebody give an update now. So they are still just north of us. I imagine they're just slowly feeding their way down this way. <laughs> 